Hi friends, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts with a super fun and free pattern. Today we're making my new favorite blanket, the Avon Throw Blanket. This throw is the stuff Netflix binges are made of. It's oversized, super cozy, and oh so cute. And the best part, this blanket is perfect for makers just learning to crochet. Now while you crochet along with me, pull up the free Avon throw blanket pattern on my blog, tlycblog.com. And if you prefer, you can get an ad-free printable version of the pattern for just $5 from my website, tlyarncrafts.com. Links to both resources are in the description. Now if you're excited to make the Avon throw blanket with me today, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for even more free crochet patterns, product reviews, and tutorials. Now let's talk materials. To make the Avon throw blanket, you'll need category five bulky weight yarn. I made my blanket with Lion Brand's Hue and Me yarn and it took 11 skeins. You'll also need a 10 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. This project does come with a chart for the puff stitches as well as a written pattern. If you're gonna work off of the chart, grab a chart keeper as well. This one is from We Crochet and I use it all the time. For this tutorial, I'll be using some yarn from my stash and a slightly smaller hook. Now let's get stitching. We'll begin with a slip knot and chain 85. Since I'm making a slightly smaller version, I'm gonna chain less. Yarn over, pull up a loop. There's one chain, two, three, four. To continue with row one, we're going to work in the back bump of the chain and single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain down the line. So we'll flip our chain over, find the second chain, here's one and two. Working under just that back bump, we'll yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops for a single crochet. Under the back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll repeat that all the way down the line. When you're done, you should have 84 single crochet stitches. With row one complete, we can chain one and turn our work to begin row two. Rows two through 11 are just a chain one and single crochet across the row. So one single crochet goes into each stitch. Repeat this row until you have 11 rows total and then join me back here for the first puff stitch section. Let's take a quick pause and talk about counting your rows. So right now I have seven rows. I'm gonna show you what that means. These little V's here, indicate your single crochet stitches. So here's the front of one row, and this is the back of the second row. Here's row three and four, five and six, and this makes seven. I'm only working to seven rows for my small sample, but you'll want to work to 11. Next, we're going to get into puff stitch section one. In this pattern, you get not only the written instructions, which you can find on page three, but you're also going to get the puff stitch chart. The way that it's set up is we're going to read it from right to left and then bottom to top. Along the top here, you have numbered stitches. Along the side here, you have numbered rows. So we'll begin with row one. So I'm going to take my little bar here and place it underneath row one. Looking at row one from right to left, here's what you have. The first five stitches are only worked once at the beginning of the row. And then stitches one through 19 are repeated as many times as possible until you reach the last three stitches. In this pattern, we're going to repeat stitches one through 19 four times, and that will leave us with three stitches at the end of our row. On our chart, White squares indicate single crochet stitches and black squares indicate puff stitches. So for our first five stitches, we have three single crochets, a puff stitch, and another single crochet. Let's do that now. We start with three single crochet stitches. Here's one, here's two, and three. Next, we need to do a puff stitch in this stitch here. To do that, we'll yarn over and pull up a loop in that stitch four times. So that was one. Here's two. 
here's three and four. You'll know you did it right if you have nine loops on your hook. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We'll now pull through eight loops. So I'm gonna hold this one back to make sure I don't catch this one, but I'll yarn over and pull through those eight. At this point, I like to give it a little tug so my puff stitches really pop. Now I'm gonna yarn over and pull through these last two loops, and again, I'll give it a tug. I'm going to push this puff stitch towards the back of my work and go on to the next stitch, which is a single crochet. So that's the first five stitches of this row. If we look at stitches one through 19 for row one, we have 18 white squares and one black square. That means we have 18 single crochets and one puff stitch in our repeat. So for your blanket, you'll repeat that four times. Here we go. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. The next stitch is a puff stitch. Here's how to do that again. Yarn over and pull up a loop in the next stitch four times. So that's one, two, three, and four. Yarn over and pull through the first eight loops, tighten down, yarn over and pull through the last two loops, tighten down. Push that puff stitch towards the back of your work and continue to your next stitches. Again, I need to do 18 single crochets. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, here's seventeen, and eighteen. My next stitch is going to be a puff stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop for one. Here's two, here's three, and four. Yarn over, pull through eight loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. If we look at our chart, I've now reached my last three stitches, and these are all single crochets. Tightening down on my loop, I'm gonna push that puff stitch towards the back of my work and single crochet one, two, and three. Now that our first row is done, it doesn't look like much from this side, which is the wrong side of our work, but if we flip it over, we now have these nice puffy puff stitches. For row two of our puff stitch section and all even rows, we're going to chain one, turn, and single crochet across. So here are my first three stitches. My next stitch is my puff stitch. If you look right above that puff stitch, you see two loops here. That's where we're gonna insert our hook to place a single crochet in the top of that puff stitch. And we'll continue single crocheting across the row. And then we'll move on to row three. Here on row three of the chart, of course, we're starting from the right and our first five stitches are all single crochets. Then after that, looking at stitches one through 19, we have one puff stitch and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 single crochets, a puff stitch, and two more single crochets. So let's see how that works up in our project. I'll start with a chain one and turn my work. My first five stitches are all single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. My next stitch is a puff stitch which begins my 19 stitch repeat. So there's one loop pulled up, two, three, and four. Yarn over, pull through eight loops, tighten down, yarn over, pull through two loops. 
pushing that puff stitch to the back, I have 15 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. The last three stitches of my 19 stitch repeat are a puff stitch and two single crochets. So here's my puff stitch. And my two single crochet stitches. There's one and two. If I go back to the beginning of my 19 stitch repeat, it starts with a puff stitch. So that's what I'll put here. And it's followed by 15 single crochets. My last three stitches in my 19 stitch repeat are a puff stitch. One, two, three, four, followed by two single crochets. There's one and two. My last three stitches on my chart are single crochets. So there's one, two, and three. If I flip my work over, I can see that I'm now placing my puff stitches in the pattern of the blanket. So the next row, and all even rows of course, are chain one, turn, and single crochet across. So continue in this way, working your way up the chart. And when you're done with puff stitch section one, join me back here and we'll start the blanket body. From here, you'll move into the blanket body section, which is just rows and rows of single crochet. You'll wanna repeat that until your blanket measures 41.5 inches from the very bottom up to your working row. Your next row is going to be your puff stitch section two, beginning with row one. So you'll do your entire puff stitch section again, working rows one through 17. And then we'll finish up with the blanket ending, which is a chain one and single crochet across for 11 rows. From here, we'll be able to fasten off and weave in our ends. Let me show you how to do that. Let's pretend for a moment that I've finished my blanket. From here, I'll need to fasten off. And what that means is I'll detach the yarn that's coming from the ball from my actual project. Leaving a fairly long tail to weave in later, we would cut the yarn and then lift the working loop up and out of your project. Thread that yarn onto a tapestry needle and weave in your ends. To weave in my ends, I like to take my tapestry needle under several loops of stitches in one direction and pull through. Massage it so you don't have any puckering. And then I'm gonna come back the other direction. So I came out here from this stitch. I'm gonna skip this first loop, insert my hook under the next loop of that stitch and start working back in the same direction. I find that that locks the end into the work and I don't have to worry about my ends coming loose. And then just pull through. So you have a nice flat area where you wove your ends in and you don't have to worry about it coming apart. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and working close to the project, but not too close, I'm going to cut that end. Repeat that for the other remaining end and you'll be all done with your Avon throw blanket. Thanks so much for joining me to make the Avon throw blanket. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now before we go, let's thank our cup of caffeine sponsor, Carolyn. When donating, Carolyn said, hey Tony, I love your videos. You are so straightforward, comforting, knowledgeable, and inspiring. Thank you. And thank you, Carolyn. I really appreciate your generosity. Now, if you enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you out in one of my videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.